There was talk of a new broom sweeping into Opera Australia. I don't know what it was meant to sweep. She was looking at Opera Australia's business model. Seemed to be okay to me. And she wanted to, quote, refashion the company's operating model and, quote, put more of an Australian stamp on what is essentially a European art form. <laughs> she said that her role was to set Opera Australia's overall strategy in consultation with the board. Well, the strategy appears to be making it difficult for talented people to remain. Musically, she studied the clarinet, that was about it, but she said she wanted to be an arts manager. Terracini, on the other hand, was born into music and is coming to Opera Australia, the nation's biggest performing arts company and one of the world's biggest opera companies. Terracini's coming was transformative. One wonders how anyone else could have rebuilt Opera Australia after the devastation of coronavirus. He was criticised for promoting dual productions of Phantom of the Opera. Not opera, they, not fair income opera, they say. But his answer was simple. He had to pull the company out of the doldrums yet again, as he did when he arrived there over a decade ago. Indeed, in 2019, ticket income was $73 million, creating a surplus for Opera Australia that they'd never heard of, $6.3 million. As a musician, Terracini started on the cornet, progressed to flugelhorn, trombone, euphonium, euphonium and timpani. As a baritone, Terracini sang major roles such that when he played the escaped Cuban slave in German composer Henze's El Samar O.N., the music critic writing for The New Yorker described Terracini's performance as, quote, smouldering, explosive, shrieking, whispering, singing, expansive, fierce, suddenly sly, tremendous. Well, he was headhunted for Opera Australia after a disastrous period for the company during the global financial crisis. Within a few years, Terracini made Opera Australia into a production powerhouse diversifying its activities with opera on TV, digital opera with LED screens, and as you know, opera on the beach and opera on the harbour. Opera Australia receives about $25 million in federal taxpayers' money. So the taxpayers are entitled to know why Terracini is quitting almost immediately. It's only months ago that Lyndon Terracini said, fundamentally, I'm still a singer. My heart will always be in an opera company. And following coronavirus, he has again dug the company out of financial trouble. Well, now under Fiona Allen, perhaps the broom is being swept through and the business model is changing. But it's easy to talk in cliches, far more difficult to get results. Lyndon Terracini, the artistic director of Opera Australia, has got results. He's achieved them for 13 years. He now joins others in an abrupt departure. Questions should be asked as to where to now for the company. Opera Australia. Terracini has been a magnetic figure for opera here, placing entertainment through artistic endeavour as the ultimate goal, and he's succeeded. He will be farewelled on October 29 on the opening night of Verdi's Attila. As an opera lover, I must say that I wonder about the future and worry of the company without Terracini. And I wonder what the agenda is for the new Chief Executive of Opera Australia, Fiona Allen. Is Opera Australia under Fiona Allen going to become woke and a platform for the culture wars, giving preeminence to diversity and inclusivity, which may well be at odds with artistic excellence and entertainment? I have to say, I'm not optimistic.